Hello and welcome back to another episode reaction of Jujutsu Kaisen. Episode 17 we are up to now and I think this is the final episode of the event exchange little series we've had going on here. In the last episode we had Panda and Mekamaru kind of face off. We learned a lot about Panda's sort of backstory, his power technique, all of that. He's kind of befriending Mekamaru. We also saw Toto and Itadori. Toto has kind of been giving Itadori lessons and helping him to finally understand and utilize his power to its full extent. Seems like it's working out well for them. And then right at the end of that last episode, we saw a quick little scene between Miwa and Maki. So I guess that's where we're gonna kind of start off this episode. Now we didn't see Mai in the last episode at all. So she is definitely gonna pop up. I feel like she's either gonna go for Nobara or Maki. Either way, she's going to go for either of them with the intention to kill, because that is just how deranged she seems to be despite the fact they are not actually enemies but if this is the last episode i'm assuming toge is gonna find and destroy the main curse that will end the event but at the end of this episode i hope that the kyoto and tokyo students or at least a few of them a handful will walk away from this as if not friends at least acquaintances not everyone can be best friends like toto and itadori but i guess we'll see what happens in this episode and how it ends now for those of you who are interested in uncut or early access to these videos please check out my patreon which is in the description otherwise if you enjoy this content please be sure to like comment your thoughts on it subscribe anything you can do to help my channel is absolutely amazing so thank you for that and let's get into this video oh <laughs> my life oh no they're getting to the edge No, I like hearing other people's thoughts on their powers because it gives me a sense of like how strong they actually are. <gasps> oh wow, she's got some confidence to do that. Destroy her weapon? She just took it! She just took her katana. <gasps> no. <laughs> That's just mean. Wait, who's that? Oh, it's the camera. Wait, who's this? Oh. Oh, she's trying to get her to do something. Oh, I see. Is she wanting to have Itadori killed? Really? You don't know? I thought surely he would know. Oh, the curses. Oh, are we going to see Toge then? Because he's the one who's destroying them, right? Well, he's trying to get to the main one. Oh, okay. That was easy, wasn't it? Oh no, what is that doing? Oh, that's gonna hurt. Is that why she likes to be all cute and everything? Alright, come on, beat her. She's kind of annoying me. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. I see. So, like, to protect themselves from, like, Toga's cursed speech, you gotta, like, constantly protect your ears and your brain as well. Is that what he said? That's so shit, but like, no reason to be a bitch. <laughs> mm. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's no excuse. Mm. Oh, 
Exactly. That's two completely different people. What did she just do? Is she gonna do it? <gasps> oh, she wasn't meaning to. She just needed that little bit. Yeah. I remember that technique. Hell yeah, you are. <laughs> Wait. Oh. Is that a nicer hammer? <laughs> it's not going to cause as much damage. Is that my? You're kidding! No way she just shot from there. Was it like an actual bullet though? Has that actually hurt Nobara? Like, like an actual bullet? <laughs> or is it different? It does different damage? Oh, okay. Oh. Here we go. This is what they've been waiting for. Oh. <laughs> Here we go. This is gonna be interesting. <laughs> He's so relieved. That's fair, there is so much to learn. That's so shit. That's really, really bad. Oh, she's still got a sword. She literally stole it. <laughs> she hasn't given it back. Ooh. That's seriously gonna be terrifying for young people. Oh, that that in itself is really terrifying. Even for me. <laughs> That's sweet though. Why can't you just get along? Hell yeah, she's gonna get that. I know it. They're two very different people, hey. How did they become such enemies though? Why does my hate her so much? Oh, she's out. Wait, was that seventh? Or her technique? What? So she just created that bullet. Really, just one bullet. Oh no. Is she actually gonna die? How? How did she just do that? She was on another level. And that's why you hate her. I reckon she was gonna go back. Like she'll be the leader and be allowed to change the rules, which would allow her and my, and anyone else to not be like ostracized. Oh, this makes me sad. Really does. Oh, that's, that's so cute. 
So I really thought that was going to the end of the exchange event. I thought that was the final episode, but it seems like that is not the case. The event would not just end like that right there. So obviously the next episode also are going to be about this exchange event as well. To start off the episode though, we had Miwa and Maki kind of battle it out. It really surprised me when Maki just absolutely destroyed her weapon and then just charged at Miwa. She must have been so confident in herself, her skill, all of that for her to do that. And Miwa was just shook and she ended up losing her sword. Maki just stole it. And then she took it with her to her next fight with Mai, where we saw Gojo in this episode and also all the other school higher ups. So everyone is surprised that Maki is only a grade four when she's actually on like a grade two level. But from what I kind of made out from Gojo's explanation, it was that he didn't want to change her to a grade two because the Zenin clan should just accept her back how she is. Is that what he was saying? Because I guess he was thinking that if she upgraded to a grade two, the clan might accept her back because she's a grade two now and not just a grade four, which is obviously like something else to talk about that Zenin clan there. But it seems like that was the only reason that he didn't want to do that. And he also thought that the Zenin clan would probably accept her back. But from the sounds of what else we've learned about the Zenin clan and about what well, I think, I'm not sure whether it was Maki or Mei or maybe it was Momo even who was explaining it. But someone mentioned that they wouldn't accept them back as a Jujutsu sorcerer because it's kind of like going back on their word sort of thing, like admitting that they're wrong. So I don't really know what to think about this whole Maki situation. But while Gojo was explaining that, we were also introduced to this new chick who I guess can like kind of control animals or use animals as cameras but she seems to be something else. I feel like there's definitely something going on with her. She might be one of the higher ups who wanted Itadori dead as well. She kind of just has that vibe about her and that's why she hasn't been focusing a lot of her cameras on Itadori as well which is something that Gojo brought up. Maybe she is even working with Ghetto. I don't know. I just feel like there's something a bit suspicious about her but we saw Momo and Nabara fight as well and Momo is just kind of giving Nabara lessons I guess or opinions on what she thinks about the world specifically about Mai though and how she had a shitty upbringing blah 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 she's had it unfair in life and yeah I understand that but exactly like Nabara said your upbringing is not an excuse for how you act today how you choose to be today and Maki is an example of that Mai is the type of person who had a shitty upbringing and has kind of just let it consume her and has turned into like kind of a shitty person herself. Whereas Maki had this shitty upbringing but she used it to kind of grow and go this isn't what I want in my life. This isn't who I want to be as a person and she used that sort of shitty situation to change her life for the better I guess. If that made any sense at all. It does in my head. But Nobara eventually took down Momo but then Mai took down Nobara with a rubber bullet though thank god. And then Maki rocks up at the exact same time and her and Mai finally battle it out and we see like this whole backstory about these twins. So Maki was born like she couldn't see curses at all and that's why she wears the glasses and she uses cursed objects to find them. So we know that much already but it seems like Mai kind of was born with a power in which she can kind of create matter out of nothing so which is how she managed to create the bullet but I guess her power is so weak that her power is exhausted after only creating like one bullet which is how she caught Maki off guard I thought she was definitely going to kill Maki then but she just grabbed the bullet and threw it away like it was nothing like the reflexes this girl has but it was nice to kind of get a bit more insight into these twins their whole backstory why they turned out just the way they did, why Mai kind of hates Maki, just that entire thing going on there. So yeah, it seems like the event is not over. I thought that the event was only going to spend across four episodes just because of the title of the episodes, but obviously not. I'm not too sure how long this is going to go on for because I think we've only got like eight episodes or six even, six episodes left of the season. So unless the big like showdown, the big finale of this season happens during this event, so like Ghetto Roxa tries to take the finger 
years. And then the Kyoto and Tokyo students kind of have to team up to take them down. I feel like that's kind of where it's going at this stage because of how long the event episodes have been dragged out for. But we'll find out soon enough where this is going. Thank you for watching this though. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, be sure to like, subscribe if you haven't already. Let me know your thoughts on this episode as well. I love hearing all your opinions. Remember, I do have my Patreon linked in the description for uncut reactions and also early access. But thank you for just watching this and I hope you stick around for future videos.